to uh, log in and join. Okay, so now we are live. And I guess we should start today's session. Still, we are continuing with um, writing task one, uh, IELTS academic writing task one. Today, we are going to discuss, uh, sorry, discuss about process diagram and maps. How many of you know anything about process diagram and maps? How many of you know uh, you know, what is process diagram and um, what is maps? Can anyone explain? Please, before we start, I always ask a few questions just to know uh, what is the level of the students, those are attending the class. Are they beginners or they have already attended the examination once? but did not come to their uh, you know, desired bands. And now they are attending this webinar to clear their doubts or just to know what mistakes they must have made. No, mic is not off. It might be your mic is off, I don't know why. <laughs> mic is not off. Oh, I, yeah, right. So your, your mic has been, uh, you know, kept off because if I keep it on for everyone, then definitely it will be difficult for me to talk to one, one candidate, right? So this is actually uh, one too many. Uh, uh, this, this session is uh, one too many. One is me, the trainer, and many is to the different candidates. So like you, you are one of the participants and that is why we have kept the mic and the video off. It is good for you because um, uh, if I keep the uh, mic on, you will not be able to uh, talk to me properly or communicate or discuss anything. The interaction will be not in a proper way. And that is why we have made this. So yes, I'm really very sorry for that. Okay, so Chano has given the answer. Maps are usually a comparison of two different years. Yes, very good. A process is with various stages. Okay, so this is a very good answer. Let me tell you, uh, you know, one thing, even if it is not related to two years, it, it may be the present uh, structure and it may be an estimated structure which can be in the future. Yes, of course, Arjinda, for any kind of questions, you need to text here, but please make sure that you know, I, I just wanted to discuss something uh, uh, with you participants, like what I um, felt in these sessions is, we can keep the questions and answering part at the end. Why? Because it actually doesn't take me to the uh, correct presentation and I feel distracted. The other main reason is, I feel that I'm not able to complete my explanation as well when I'm looking on to the questions and I start answering those questions. So what we would do is we would take the final five minutes or I would take, you know, question and, uh, uh, sorry, the questionnaire or uh, I would solve, solve your queries in the middle. For example, if we have almost 10 slides, so let's take I've completed five slides and then I ask a few questions. Yes. And uh, no problem, Arjuna, that's completely fine. And then at the end, we'll take five minutes at the end where I can answer your questions. And uh, I guess that would be great. Okay. So the question that I asked now was, how many of you are aware about process diagrams and maps? This is a question that I asked, how many of you are aware? Yes, Kaval Sandhu, um, you're raising your hand. If you have any question or anything to ask, you can go ahead, we have one minute to do so, and then I'll be starting my explanation of today's task.
I have solved a few of them for practice. Okay, very good, Charu. That, that's really uh, good to know about. That you do the uh, practicing part as well. So that's a very good thing. Okay, now let me start my explanation. And first I'll start today's session by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Yesha. Um, I am working or I am a senior trainer with altsmaterial.com. Taking over this 30-day batch, uh, meeting you every day from uh, day one to day 13th. So it's 13th day today. We have successfully completed 13 days, completing the reading module, listening module, as well as we would be uh, doing the uh, writing task one, which we will be completing it by tomorrow. And then we will start with the uh, writing task one of general training module. Finally, by day 19, we would start with writing task two. We will end up with speaking module. So this is a schedule for the next um, 15 days. And uh, I guess you should be aware about it so that you can plan your day for the, uh, uh, that is plan your day from your work, from your college. And yes, you can be free by 7 p.m. So I have on the video, as I said, if you are not able to see the right-hand part of the um, uh, presentation, so what you can do is you will be able to find four different icons exactly on the video tab that you have. You can just use the first one, which will minimize your screen of the videos. So you can just use that and uh, minimize that part. So yes. Um, Uh, Surjit Singh, is it possible you can give the answer in English? Whatever is going to be your answer, that's completely fine. Don't worry. Uh, I will correct you if you are writing, you know, with uh, incorrect grammar. So don't worry about that. Okay. So please give your answer in English. Lukman Gul, uh, ma'am, I missed the reading classes. Where, I, where can I find the videos? Okay. I'll send the uh, link. I will send the link so that you can copy the videos, or sorry, you can uh, watch the videos on YouTube on the YouTube channel, altsmaterial.com YouTube channel. I'll send the link. Yes, Sujiti, that's, that's very good. You also missed the reading class. I am, is not, I also missed the reading class. So I have sent the, uh, okay. I have sent the link in the chat box. So you can follow YouTube channel, altsmaterial.com. You can follow this channel and get the videos, uh, the previous videos from day one to day 12. You will also be able to find these videos as well. So don't worry about that. Yes, but you will get the updates. So you can subscribe to our channel where you can get the updates. Hello, Gagandeep. How are you? Now, let me, uh, you know, start my class. I am also going to send you one more link um, related to the ebooks. So, in case if you wish to buy the ebooks because you are learning every day a new topic and you need something to practice, so I have sent the link to the ebooks where you can avail the uh, discount 20% off using the code SPECIAL20. So this is valid for all, the one who attends the class. I'm lagging in reading only. So Kamal Sandhu, the point is, if you're lagging in reading, reading we already completed. So what you can do is, the best thing you can go for is, take up a few sessions with reading. Okay, just reading module. And uh, you can attend the uh, free demo class. To book the free demo class, let me send you the link. To book the free demo class, I have sent you the link. Okay, and I'm sending this link to everyone so that anyone who wants to take up a demo class or is uh, thinking to, you know, continue with the live sessions, you can go to this particular link, um, fill up the form, and you should be able to... Uh, you know, get a call from 
the team member and they will arrange a session for you where you would be better able to understand how you can continue with your sessions okay right now let's let's start with the um, let's start with today's class i'm going to close the chat box now until and unless i ask any question i'll not be opening the chat box now so let's go to the presentation part uh the first thing that i would like to describe is the different types of uh, types of questions you will have in the maps the section of maps okay so here you can see that i have presented three different questions one is which says uh, that describe one map in the present day that's it you will be having only one map which is talking about the present day so it will give the year as 2021 uh, the location or the uh, floor plan i would say the floor plan of 2021 it is the present uh, um, it is a present plan of that particular area and this also says that you need to write everything in the present tense let's take the another question which asks you to describe two maps this is related to two maps one in the present and one in the future so this is the predicted one okay this is the predicted one they will be giving you the prediction how the location would change or in what ways the location would be modified or it would be redeveloped reconstructed you can use these types of words because this is related to construction or development or uh, you know uh, building revamping you can also use these words okay next is this is a second uh, kind of maps and especially you would need to use the future and present tenses so the map which resembles the present condition you would be using the present tense and the map which will be describing about the estimated location so you would be describe, uh, describing this particular uh, map in future tense now the last question is describe two maps in which you will have one in the past and one in the present so when you describe this particular thing you will be using everything in the past tense like uh, was was made was constructed was developed in this manner again the point is it would be always better to go for a simple past or past perfect please do not use ing why because definitely when you use ing that shows a temporary condition so you should not do that so don't use ing whenever you take uh, you know present description of the plan or past description of the plan i would suggest not to use in the future as well but in the future instead of using will you can use is going to will be going to so in this manner you can use ing but not exactly changing the verb and uh, you know uh, writing it as uh, i would suggest was constructed don't say was constructing that's wrong that's completely wrong okay so the point is use simple past past perfect simple present or if if it is talking about the immediate past that you can use present perfect why am i describing you about the grammatical structure is this is what we would be doing in the live sessions as well what is the meaning of live sessions see one on one classes where the trainer will explain you the grammatical aspect of the uh, uh, of the description how you can describe related to grammar because when i come to writing and speaking we need to focus on grammar we need to focus on vocabulary and if you don't do that you will not be able to score good bands again simple grammar but with accurate grammar so the point is i'm not asking you to uh, you know present a high range of grammar no my point is to present an accurate grammatical structure that is no grammatical errors with no grammatical errors so you will be able to uh, get a few sessions of grammar as well if you feel you are not exactly the one which can cope up with the ielts answers and would like to take up a few grammar sessions you can do that 
much. Okay. Now, coming to the uh, next part, as I said, the two maps which would we'll be describing about past and the present. So just make sure that you're using the proper tense. So these three questions, why did we have taken these three questions is to make you understand the exact use of the grammar. This was a question that I had yesterday from a participant asking for what type of tense should we use in different questions. So this is the answer. So analyze your question and then make sure which grammatical structure you're going to use. Now, let's take the next, uh, let's take the next part. Coming to the basic structure. So everyone knows about the basic structure that we uh, discussed yesterday or we discussed on the first day of writing task for academic as well. We are going to write four paragraphs. The first paragraph will be the paraphrased statement or paraphrase sentence. The second paragraph is going to be the overview of the uh, maps or the overview of the process diagrams. Paragraph three will be the main body paragraph one and paragraph four will be the main body paragraph two. Now, I'm going to start the uh, questions and you need to answer me. The first question is, what kind of overview statement will you give in the maps? What type of overview statement? Just a general overview, which you must have understood uh, from your learnings or you know, uh, from the maps that I described that you might be using the uh, past plan and the present plan, you will be comparing it. Or you might be using the present plan and the future plan and you would be comparing both or you would be describing only one map. So what kind of overview statement will you give if it is related to map and if it is related to process diagram? Can anyone please give me the answer? Uh, Kaval Sandhu, is it possible? Please, you can, uh, you know, write your question in the chat box. Yes. I just wanted a general statement, Charu. The point is, you would be showing the comparison about the major, uh, about the major change. So you may describe about the major change, right? And what can be the other changes about the major change and the changes, sorry, and the changes in a particular area, the changes in a particular area or, uh, you know, the particular size of the building or the particular size of the building or or what can be described no change the one which has remained unchanged over the years right the location or the plan which has been unchanged over the years so you would be taking something from these three a major change the changes in a particular area or the particular size of the building and no change this these three main features can be taken from the map. These three main features can be taken from the map or, or you can also describe about a new construction. Describe about a new construction. So this you can do in the map. Now, if I talk about the process diagram, so what can be described in the process diagram? Majority of the times in the process diagram, it is described about the uh, processes or the number of stages with the starting stage and the ending stage and the final stage, I would say, not the ending stage, final stage. Okay, so when you take the process diagram, then you would be describing this particular thing in the process. Now, the other part is when we come to the process part, I will explain you what types of process diagram do we have for uh, as academic. Generally, very few uh, people know about it. 
or they might not be knowing about it. So we will discuss about that, but let's go with the first part that is the map. I hope you all are able to see the map properly. And uh, let's take two minutes for you to observe what major changes have been made in this map and describe main features. Can you describe main features of these two maps? If you see, the first map is talking about Grand, Grange Park of 1920. And the next map is talking about Grange Park, which is about today, the present condition. So when you would be describing about the map of 1920, you would be using past tense. When you would be describing about the today's condition, it will be present tense. I'm not asking you to describe everything. I just want the main features. Let me take you one main feature. For example, the fountain. If you see in the middle of the uh, path, you can see a fountain in 1920, whereas that fountain has been removed and uh, it has been constructed or converted into a rose garden. And on the four corners, you will find seats where uh, the visitors can sit there, can relax there. So that particular thing is a major change, I would say. There is no change in the entrance. The entrance have been the same over the years, no change with the entrance. There is also an, another rose garden on the top. You can say on the northwestern part. Can you say that on the northwestern part? You can see that there is a rose garden. And uh, uh, even on the northwestern part and the southwestern part in the corners, we have the uh, two rose gardens. We have two rose gardens. From that, the southern rose garden has been removed. And there is nothing constructed. But yes, the northern rose garden is as it is. Plus, the pond for water plants have been, uh, uh, you know, the pond has completely been removed. And it has been revamped. You can say it has been revamped into children's play area. And uh, the glass house has also been reconstructed or, uh, or I would say... Reconstructed, or uh, I would say a different, uh, you know, word which can be used for saying this particular thing, but it has been changed, or you can say it has been changed into a uh, water feature. Okay, it has been changed into a water feature. So, majority of the places have been reconstructed. So, what are those places? Pond for water plants, then glass house, and then the fountain. A uh, stage for musicians. If you take, if you want to use the same kind of word or just one sentence, then you can take all these four categories and you can say that these have been converted into a different type of um, different type of arrangements. And uh, you can also say that the entrance have been the same. The entrance, the first entrance is opposite the Arnold Avenue, and the second entrance is opposite the Eldon Street that has not been changed, it is the same. So the one thing you would be describing about the major changes and the one that hasn't been changed over the years. So this is the part that you will be explaining. The first paragraph will always be the paraphrase statement. Again, uh, am, I, am I audible? Can everyone please tell me, am I audible? Yes, I guess, Preet, you need to check your uh, connection as well. Yes, yes. Okay. Fine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so now again a question. Uh, can you please give me the paraphrase statement of the question? The introductory question. Can you please give me the uh, paraphrase question? Uh, sorry, paraphrase statement. The introductory part. The introductory part. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. 
to start the annotation i just don't know why did i go there uh you know to stop the video now i guess you would be able to see me just me right so now can you please can you all please attend this particular section very quickly i'm going to give you only one minute to do this give me the introductory statement which you need to paraphrase from the question that is given in the presentation please do that quickly the question is the plants below show a public park when it first opened in 1920 and the same park today so you can uh, you know you just have to change the words present the same meaning and you have to give me the first paragraph please give me the first paragraph which is called as the paraphrased um paraphrased question paraphrased statement quickly it should be only with one line one full stop and not two lines always remember that your paraphrase statement will be only of one line one statement can you all give me the answers please quickly we still have to discuss more why why am i not getting the answers you cannot say i am going to compare girish you cannot take uh, you know the uh, continuous tense i am going to prepare when are you going to compare when why do you want to take future tense here you have to take always make sure when you give the first paragraph it should be in the present tense simple present tense uh the map shows the plan of grange park in 1920 and the differences made to this super very good rohit a very good answer the given maps show the changes made to the grange park that opened in 1920 and today perfectly written charu very good answer so something like this you have to present it in the present tense but not in the continuous tense i am going to compare says that you would be doing it sometime but not immediately okay so yes just me that's given the answer that the given diagrams i should you take diagrams then if you want to take diagrams then take map diagrams okay use the word map diagrams the given map diagrams illustrate again when you take diagrams it should be illustrate illustrate the information about the grange park look like in 1920 and in these days no 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 so illustrate the information about the grange park uh in the past or you can say in the year 1920 and uh and in the present you can just talk about that okay but not saying in this way then lukman has given the answer the illustrated plan demonstrates a public park plan when it was constructed when it was constructed in 1920 and the current situation okay lukman you need to make this change uh, then the map shows the different types of areas sorry the different types of area changes in the public park that have been made over the years since 1920 to today okay something somewhere i feel uh, you know the map shows the there are two maps chart you need to understand that there are two maps two plans okay one the past one and one the future one sorry the present one so you need to take two okay the given diagrams represent the information about infrastructure of of a public park of a public park why do you want to write area public park area area is not required so you can take infrastructure of public park along with its present as well as the past time okay fine that's completely fine uh, the diagrams illustration the comparison between okay harjinder there is so the maps show the different types yes you can you can go with that 
Okay, different type of changes. Again, different types of change. No, that is wrong. Different type, different types of changes because only one change is not. There is not only one change made. They have made almost many changes in the map. Okay, that is in the area in the uh, in the park. So, uh, Harjinder, the spelling of diagrams is wrong. Illustration will not come. It will come the illustrate the diagrams illustrates. Or if you want to write comparison, then please take it. The diagrams compare the changes of the Grange Park, which was in 1920 and made today, and the changes made today. Okay, so you can uh, explain it in this way. Next is the rendered first pictorial representation illustrate the information about the Grange Park of 1920, while the second map depicts the present. It's a very good way of writing, but don't you think it is like uh, uh, don't you think like it is uh, you know uh, what we say? Okay, fine, no problem. That's that's good. Uh, Kaval, it's it's okay. Fine, the answer is really correct. Okay, that is what I also described Chahar when when you keep on sending me the questions. My concentration also shatters and that is why <coughs> I clearly state that, uh, you know, you should not be, um, what we say, you should not be typing any text or not asking any question in between my explanation. Okay, so now I'm closing the chat box. Now I feel you are very much, you know, comfortable in writing the uh, paraphrase statement. Let's go to the question. Sorry, let's go to the answer. The answer describes in this way, the maps outline the changes that took place in a public park called Grange Park from 1920 to today. This is what we have taken. Overall, the park was changed and renovated to offer people more possibilities than they used to have decades ago, such as a cafe, theater, playground and parking. Rest in the complete uh, paragraph, they have described about the major changes, the, you know, taking uh, two or three changes on one end and then the other changes in the next paragraph. Okay, now we have closed the chat box. I'm not going to uh, read any of the answer now. So this, is a, this would be the last answer. Sai Krishna has given, in comparison of both the maps, shown the difference, shows the difference. In comparison of both the maps, shows the difference between, between until 1920 till today's changes of place about, about the maps. No, this, this is wrong, Sai Krishna. I'm really very sorry. The grammatical way is wrong. First of all, you cannot start with, in comparison of both, it would be always better to start with the proper description of the uh, picture that is given to you, what it is. So analyze the question, analyze the figure. It is a map that starts with describing that it is a map that the maps outline, the given maps outline, or you can say uh, the graph describes, the process diagram describes, the process diagram explains the stages. So it is always better to take up the uh, type of diagram that you are able to see on the screen or uh, in your question paper, start the sentence with that. You should start with a subject, a proper subject. So the subject is always a noun. When you see here, the maps is called as nouns. It is a noun. Okay, yes, yes, that's, that's really good. So again, I'm closing the chat box and I allow you uh, two minutes to read the complete answer. Describing everything about the graph. In details, the park was open in 1920 and entertainment facilities, including a larger stage and various areas of recreation, have since been added to it. So, if you see, the major changes have been made to the area in relation to the entertainment, the amphitheater for concerts. And then, when you just, you know, go for the children's play area, it is again an entertainment place. There is a cafe. They have reduced the rose gardens from three to only one. So there's only one rose garden. Sorry, there are two rose gardens. 
Earlier, there were three rose gardens, but they were at the corners on the northern side and on the southern side. But now they have taken one in the middle and one in the northwestern side. So you can describe these in this way as well. Okay, to the left of the new garden, the previous stage for musicians has been turned into a much larger amphitheater facing the opposite direction. What is the meaning of facing the opposite direction? That is facing the western direction, western side. So the audience would be sitting here and the amphitheater is actually facing on the uh, western part, not, not facing the middle part. Okay, this change has necessitated the removal of both seatings on the far left side as well as the rose garden in the bottom left corner of the map. So you can see this, these seating uh, uh, parts, this one and this one, they have been removed in order to facilitate the proper construction of the amphitheater. This also you have to explain because these have been removed. Why it is removed? To facilitate the proper construction or to use a complete area for amphitheater. And that has to be explained. Okay, so the point is, I'm not going to read out the whole answer. The point is, you need to describe about each and every minor change when it comes to map as well as when it comes to process diagram. If you feel that in the process diagram as well, you can skip one or two stages in order to uh, write according to the word limit, you cannot do that. Instead, what you can try is, rather than uh, you know, taking up a complex sentence, you can go for a simple sentence, reduce the sentence or compress the sentence in order to write according to the word limit. Okay, now uh, let's move on to the next part. As I explained to you about the ebooks, so yes, as I said today, for example, you are going to complete the process diagrams as well as the maps, you should do some homework. And to complete that homework, these ebooks will help you because these ebooks have sample answers, the perfect sample answers where you can properly understand the grammar and uh, the vocabulary, those have been used, the explanation of the vocabularies. You will get everything with these ebooks. And the one who is going to start the practicing part for them, these ebooks are going to be the best ones. Okay, so don't forget to get the access of these books and you would be getting 20% discount if you use the code SPECIAL20. I guess this is clear. Now let's move on to the next segment that is process diagram. What is process diagram? The process diagram is the one that describes a process of something, how it works. So it explains the mechanism of a system or a product or a process. Now, as I... Um, as I am aware about the process diagrams, there are two types of processes. One is a linear process and one is a cyclical process. Can you describe what is a cyclical process or what, can, what would be a linear process? Any idea that you get with the terms? Uh, uh, no problem, Baljinder, that's completely fine. We just started half an hour back, so you can definitely continue or you can watch this video again. Uh, through our YouTube channel, IELTSmaterial.com. Yes. So, Kaval, what you can do is you can get the reading materials from the ebook store, store.ielsmaterial.com. Uh, yes. Yes, Deepika. It's completely correct. When we talk about a cyclical process, it is continuous. That is, every time you see the cycle, right? So, if I take the life cycle process or if I take a recycling process or if I talk about a or if I talk about an electricity generation process, that, that is a uh, you know cyclical process. It, it starts from the first point and it every time continues to go in a cycle in the clockwise or anti-clockwise, but still it continues with a, you know, uh, what we say, with a circular motion. It goes on in the continuation. Linear process has a beginning and an end. Perfect, Charu, a very good answer that you have, uh, that you have given. Linear process has a starting point and it has an ending point. Yes, it does not go as a cyclical process, but when again uh, we need to do that process, we would again start from the first part and we would end it up with the final product. Let's take an example of wafers. Okay, the production of wafers, linear process like how to make coffee, we can 
right step by step yes perfect so we are not going to repeat that process over and over for the whole day we are not going to do that but if i talk about a life cycle that is uh, we have the ants and uh, you know uh, the ants they uh, what we say they uh, give birth to the young ones and then those ants again they start their process again the process starts with the production of the young ones so that particular life cycle process is going on going on so it doesn't stop right and this is something which has a starting part like let's take how to make a coffee so i would say i would first uh, uh what we say whisk the coffee and the sugar and i'll make it hard and thick or i would make it uh, fluffy and then i would also um, i would also uh, make the milk hot and i'll add that milk into the coffee mixture and i'll make sure that i make it as a dalgona coffee is it <laughs> okay so this is what we call it as linear process i'm not going to uh, you know take up this linear process again and again first we pick up coffee beans where would you do that <laughs> i thought i'm just describing a coffee process as a normal person i don't have any uh, you know coffee farm i'm not going to pick up coffees and uh, then i am uh, you know i am going to grind that coffee i'm not going to do that definitely just me so okay jokes apart but yes your idea is completely perfect if i talk according to the perspective of um according to the perspective of a company yes i would definitely go for it could just go to ccd acha we can go to ccd when we want to have a coffee here we are discussing about how can we make a coffee we are going to discuss a, we are discussing about a process okay chah definitely we will go to ccd yes okay now let's continue with the structure again the structure is going to be the same so just keep in mind i won't be explaining about the structure every time you need to keep this four part paragraph structure okay you need to keep this in mind the four part structure the four part structure means four paragraphs introduction overview body paragraph 1 and body paragraph 2 so we will be writing four paragraphs next is uh let's go with the uh, first part now this is called as a linear process here the process i am pretty sure that you must have come across this particular uh, process this is a very famous process that everybody knows about it and you must have you know uh, read the answers as well the sample answers at many places in many platforms uh, that is the online platforms yes of course yes yes definitely you must have you must have gone through this but this is the point now this is just to explain i am not going to take you to the answer yes if uh, if you know there are participants as well who are attending the session for the first time they must not be knowing about what is a linear process related to process diagram and i just take to the uh, answer and i allow you 2 minutes to read the answer just to make you understand how this goes but here if you take there are when you want to describe about the number of stages calculate the number of arrow marks that you see the bigger arrow marks not the smaller ones the bigger arrow marks so that is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so we have six stages okay the main six stages that is this is the first one this is the second one this is the third one this is the fourth one the fifth one and the sixth the sixth one okay the final stage is uh delivery of the bricks so this particular uh diagram is talking about the manufacturing of bricks to facilitate the building industries with uh bricks the molded bricks wherein they can start their construction they can continue with their construction so this is a very common uh question and that is why i have taken this common question to make you very clearly understand about the linear process now you can see that this delivery uh van doesn't come to the first process again it doesn't come to the first process again the first part of the process is completely different and the final stage is also different there is no connection between the first process and the final stage okay so now let's move on to the answer part the answer says 
you know, what I've done is I have taken the uh, overall statement. I have taken the overall statement with the first paragraph itself so that it can facilitate me to write the process uh, in the next three paragraphs. Why? Because if I take this particular area, if I talk about this particular area, I need to describe it in detail as it contains three different departments and even the temperatures used in these three different departments are to be explained in detail. Okay, so that is why I have taken this particular paragraph separately and again coming to the subsequent stage goes for the packaging. It, it actually covers the cooling process and packaging and then it is taken over to the final stage. Okay, so you can take two minutes and read the answer and uh, you can understand the step-by-step -step culture, how it is taken, the process that is described step-by-step -step from the first part. So yes, do focus on connectors. Yes, do focus on the connectors. So the connector is to begin with, that is the first part you can take. Firstly, the clay used to make the bricks is dug up from the ground by a large bigger, that is the connector. So the first connector that is used is to begin. The second connector is used in the second paragraph, which is um, following this, following this, yes. And then the next is next, you can see next. So it is talking about the next, um, what we say, it is talking about the next structure, okay. And after that, it is talking about in the subsequent stage, in the subse uh, subsequent stage, or we can say in the next step or a step which is following in the same uh, part in the subsequent stage, you can also take that. After that, it is finally, yes, followed by, okay, followed by is not a connector. It is uh, taking it with the, uh, it is actually taken with the, uh, sentence itself. So I would not say it is a connector, but uh, finally, finally is the one. So here, these are the connectors. Kaval Sandhu, I guess I have made, you know, clear about the connectors. These are the connectors. So generally, when you take a process diagram, you should focus using connectors like these. And the name of the connector that is used is sequencing. The name of the connectors that is specially used is sequencing where you are going to describe one after the other stage in a sequence. Clear? Now, let's take the next part. Okay, uh, can you all tell me a few, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask a few questions. How do you feel about this particular lecture? One too many. How do you feel about this particular lecture? One too many. Is it informative? Um, uh, is it allowing you to uh, talk to me personally, or is it solving all your queries? Acha, very, very interactive and informative. But Charu, I guess you're not able to talk to me personally, right? So that is a drawback. That is a drawback. You learn many new things. That's, that's really good. So thank you so much. But are you getting any personal guidance? Are you able to talk to me personally, getting any personal guidance? Or uh, am I able to send you any practice questions? Or is it that, uh, uh, is it that exactly? So this is what is the thing. That's a rhetorical question. Exactly. So the point is, even see, I'm not able to give you too many vocabulary or grammar lessons. This is one drawback when we actually attend a lecture. Uh, uh, one too many. Yeah, you, you, you get the basic information. But now, for example, if uh, you know you want to discuss about the answers that you have already practiced, you need a trainer, you need an evaluator who can actually allow you to give you the improvements. Uh, she can send you an assignment every day. She can give you the uh, homeworks every day. So this is what, yes, this is what I want to explain is, might be my explanation is really good, but I have a drawback that in this particular lecture, I'm not able to give you too many, uh, uh, you know, guidance or I would say any evaluation. I'm not able to give you any evaluations. I'm not able to correct you properly or uh, not focusing you, not focusing on you personally. 
So if you want to, you know, uh, get these benefits, then definitely you should go for one-on-one -on -one live learning. Again, if you do not want to spend your money behind giving the examinations frequently, if you have a lot of money, then why, why not spend it for the classes? Rather than giving examinations over and over again and again, it's already best to, you know, go for the, um, it's already best to go for one-on-one -on -one live session. Okay. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, all the best, Charu, all the best. Uh, 24th, oh my God, it's only uh, one week. It's only one week left. Very bad. I, I guess you should have joined before. You should, you know, you must have um, come to know about many things. So that's completely fine, right? But uh, what we say? You are never late for anything. You can start up your sessions by tomorrow as well. At least attending the mock test and getting a very good feedback about the mock test. So with that also, you can make improvements. I do that. I give a very broad feedback to my students. That is the one who takes up the mock test and uh, gets personal guidance from me. They get a very detailed feedback. And this is what we trainers do uh, in IELTSmaterial.com. We give a very detailed feedback so that even with the feedback also, you will come to know where you're lagging behind, what are the drawbacks, where you should improve. That also makes a difference. And I, we have made students. We have made students to, uh, you know, reach or bridge the gap from 6.5 to 8. We have made many students to do that. Okay. So then too, it is completely fine. All the best, Charu. All the best for that. Yes. Okay, now let's move on to the next part, giving you an example of cyclical process. Here, if you see, we have two different processes involved. Okay, one, uh, which is a cyclical process along with the production of a linear process that is silk cloth. Now, obviously, when the silk is produced, only after that, the cloth will be produced, right? So that can be taken as a linear process, but the production of um, you know, the cycle, the life cycle of the silk worm is a cyclical process. Okay. So here we have taken two diagrams, right? Uh, I guess I will not be able to open that. I'll do that at the end, Chahar. I'll definitely do that at the end and I'll describe you. Okay. Now, um, what answer can be taken? What answer can be taken? So here I have taken three paragraphs wherein I have, uh, you know, taken up the overall statement into the answer. You can answer it this way as well. Now, uh, there is an, another Chahat in the class and he has told me, he has asked me a question saying that what type of graph it is. He has actually sent a link. So I've told him that I would be sending, I would be answering him at the end of the class. Okay. So I'll do that Chahat. This is the second chahat, okay? The other chahat, okay? So now let's come back to the answer. The given pictorial shows, sorry, the given pictorial shows the life cycle of the silk worm and also, uh, and also describes, I would take, and also describes the processes of silk cloth production, okay? And also describes the process of silk cloth production it is given in that way the life cycle of the silk worm begins from the eggs laid by the mother so this is the first process the uh, eggs laid by the um, uh, the mother's uh, sorry the mother worm the eggs laid by the mother worm and then they have been uh, what we say converted into silk worm larvae after 10 days this process is uh, what we say, this is the second stage. The eggs turn into silk worm larvae after 10 days. So you need to describe this particular duration as well, which is important. The next phase, uh, they get converted into larvae producing the silk thread. And this particular duration goes for four to six weeks. This particular time duration is for four to six weeks. Again, three to eight days is taken to make the cocoon. 
and from the cocoon the moth comes out again the moth uh, goes with the first stage that is laying the eggs so this is a uh, what we say this is a cyclical process this goes continuously laying the eggs then producing the uh, what we say silk and the silk uh, the life cycle of the silk worm it converts into the silk worm again it lays eggs the cycle continues right that is what is explained here so i have made sure that i explain about the first uh diagram as the second paragraph and the next one as the third paragraph okay now the point is select boil unwind twist and weave okay weave into a cloth weave into the cloth is called as you take all the threads and you take it together and weave it and you weave that as a particular cloth you you make it in a particular cloth okay silk cloth and if you see just just take up any cloth uh, which you have at home and just see they have threads uh, these have threads in the standing line and in the sleeping line so that is weaving uh, many have weaving machines which help them to weave the uh, threads into a cloth okay so uh, this is done so this particular thing is also explained in detail taking each and every stage the first stage is selection the second stage is to boil the third stage is to unwind the fourth stage is to twist and then the last stage the final stage is weaving they also dye into different colors and dyeing process is taken so that the silk cloth can be produced into different colors now i guess this is very clear you can take one minute and uh, now if you have any questions as we discussed about process diagrams and maps today we have almost completed all the different types of graphs that we learned uh 3 days ago tomorrow will be the last day related to ielts academic writing task 1 where we are going to discuss about multiple graphs and i am going to give you extra time to ask about the questions where you can ask questions about anything related to the uh task related to the module or related to the classes the demo classes the one on one live classes how we give one on one live classes you can discuss about everything okay so let's take up the questions now i'll give you 5 minutes to ask questions whatever question you have related to today's task you can please go ahead you can go ahead with today's questions and also uh thank you so much i would definitely want to thank you all for your feedback that i received yesterday so thank you so much to all the participants and i'm going to share the link again today because this is motivating me to give you the better classes to search for uh, you know a good content which can uh, help you in uh, what we say which can help you in uh, giving the answers so yes please do that please give me the feedback today as well i would be glad to know about that yes charu you can leave because you have your demo session with us so you can definitely leave it is just going to be a questionnaire yes so all the best all the best for the demo and uh, hope that you would be successful in taking up the sessions as well as by giving the examination as well okay all the best for the preparation yeah bye bye yeah so i have sent the link to provide the feedback so please do that i would be really happy and would like to make changes in my uh, teaching pattern as well and this particular thing will help me do that changes so yes um uh, chat i will definitely give you this answer but please give me some time as i would not be open i would not be able to open this immediately so we'll do that at the end okay when i just complete all the queries we'll do that at the end for sure okay so now if any questions you have you all can please go ahead and ask me otherwise i will end up the session and we'll meet tomorrow related to learning the multiple graphs related to learning the multiple graphs okay any questions please
yes, overall statement is important, but if you are able to, uh, you know, give the overall statement in context of the uh, body paragraphs as well, it is okay. In the process diagram, it is accepted, but you will not miss the overall statement in the other graphs. For maths, for multiple graphs, for the bar graph, pie chart, table chart, uh, and the flow chart, or if it is a uh, table chart, yes. You definitely have to write the overall statement. It is very important. If you don't write the overall statement, you will lose your pants. It's very important. Uh, I'm really very sorry, Baljinder. I won't be able to share my number. But what you can do is you can share yours to me. And I will make sure that my team member calls you related to the IELTS. Uh, uh, you know, related to the learning of the IELTS. Yes, thank you so much, Baljinder. Thank you. But I guess you are sending it to the another one. Can you send it to uh, IELTS material, please? I'm not going to share my number with anyone, Kaval. It's actually, I told that, yeah, uh, you will find a participant called IELTS material. Please send your number to that, uh, you know, to that profile. So, Kaval, you can also send the uh, number to that profile. We will definitely call you and uh, we will solve your query. Or in case if you want to go for the uh, demo session as well, it will be great. Okay, thank you so much, Valjinder. 